From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Paper and pulp manufacturer Sapi recently started producing specialized cellulose at its Ngodwana mill in Mpumalanga, in line with its strategy of facilitating growth in high margin products. Liandi Colva tells us more. Sapi officially opened its Fiber Line 3 specialized cellulose plant in June this year. The plant, that was currently ramping up, was expected to reach its full 200,000 ton a year capacity by the end of this year. SAPI Southern Africa CEO Alex Thiel tells us more about why SAPI decided to open this plant. We've seen at this plant is that uh, we have uh, an excess, or excess wood in the area, hardwood especially, and that the best way we could add value to that wood is to uh, install a dissolving pulp line. So what we've done is we converted one of our market pulp lines where we just sell the, the pulp for paper production uh, into a dissolving pulp line. That's allowed us to um, earn export revenue. Most of the sales of this product, which is about 200,000 tons a year, uh, is sold into the east uh, and we uh, sell it in dollars. So it's a very good foreign revenue earner for both for SAPI and for the country. Uh, what we've also done is we've just upgraded our recovery boiler circuits, which means the other two machines, there's a newspaper machine here and a container board machine, um, have uh, benefited from that in efficiencies and, and better output and that kind of thing. So really a general upgrade, but also focusing really on the export of the dissolving pulp. Specialized cellulose can be used in products such as textiles, personal beauty products and hygiene products, in addition to having medical and industrial uses. Teal explains the impact this product will have on the textile industry. The textile industry is mostly polyester or fibers that are um, from an oil-based product and then you have cotton and wool. Um, now, cotton and wool are very limited in production, you know, they compete with agricultural land, um, you have to have a lot of water, pesticides, that kind of thing to plant cotton. But you need that hydrophilic pro properties of a cotton product that wicks away water from your skin. Now, dissolving pulp is a perfect substitute for that, it's made from trees, but in the end it gets processed into a fibre, the viscose ran, which has very, very similar and sometimes better pro uh, properties than cotton. And if you look at per hectare or the natural resources used to actually produce that product, it's about three times more efficient than cotton would be. So really that's the focus, that we are acting and we, will be, we are becoming a substitute for uh, cotton fibre. Other news making headlines this week, personalised domain names are launched for Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban. Transnet Freight Rail sees the new Swazi link raising coal export capacity to 120 million tonnes a year. And South Africa has no choice but to move towards advanced manufacturing. In a move that will see South Africa's three largest cities receive personalized internet domain names, the South African Central Registry recently announced the introduction of new city top-level domains for Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban. The purpose of this launch, what we are studying today, or what ZAC are studying today, is not so much that a person on the street can show up this afternoon to an ISP or two way to obtain a name under the job egg, for example. This is what we call, if I may put it, it's a pre-public launch and it is going to run for four months. It has two phases in it. One is called Sunrise Phase, that will run for 90 days. Sunrise Phase is only for uh, trademark owners who submitted their, trade, their registered trademarks to ICANN in America. ICANN are the entity that give us the right to launch these namespaces. Parallel to Sunrise is what you call Land Rush. Land Rush is really pretty much and, and probably, and just to underline this, it's pretty much open to people, but it's not on a first come, first serve basis. Transnet Freight Rail CEO Siabonga Gama reported that the feasibility study into a proposed rail link through Swaziland is at an advanced stage and that a business case should be presented for approval by the end of December. In terms of the Swazi link, uh, we are at an advanced stage in terms of um, finalizing. Uh, the feasibility, we will be taking um, a business case for approval um, by the end of December. Um, in terms of the <laughs> water bag, we are at uh, FEL2 stage. Um, we are looking at um, a combination of a heavy haul line uh, together with uh, some of the existing line um, uh, on the water bag. 
Um, that project will probably finalize um, the full project feasibility uh, by around August um, uh, of next year. A panel of experts says South Africa has no choice but to develop its advanced manufacturing capabilities as the structurally high wages of the country and its poor labour productivity relative to other export oriented countries hampers its global competitiveness. This government has accepted that we need a continuum of sectors that we need to focus attention on. We need to focus on those sectors that are labour absorbing on the one hand uh, where jobs that are probably absorbing a large number of people um, can, can, where the focus could be. And then on the other extreme end, uh, both the TTI and ourselves in the Department of Science and Technology have agreed that we need to target certain sectors where we are going to manufacture high-tech component for exports. And of course there are things in, in between where we need to use technology to enhance the competitiveness of existing sectors. So I'd like you to remember that there's this continuum that we need to address. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.